Good morning to all of those tuning in. This is the Rebel Lemon, and today we're back to playing Tangle Tower. So, last time we discovered the underground laboratory, the basement of the underground laboratory, and we discovered a lot of, I would argue, interesting secrets. But, one thing that was most intriguing was a theory of mine was actually confirmed. Now, with that being said, why don't we get right back into it? Mm, and we've gone over everything. This must be. This thing goes all the way up. How are we supposed to get up there? Hang on. It's pitch black, but I think there's a switch. Oh. A ladder. Want to go up? Hell yeah. Theory confirmed. I've been saying this for a while, actually. If I remember correctly. Though, I've been thinking about it. So before we continue. I have been thinking about it. And I do wonder if Freya, that we know as the murder victim, I wonder if, well, it's one of two things. Both involving a character that we have yet to meet. But the first one is, I wonder if there's a character that we haven't met. Granted, I don't know what their relation would be to the family. But the other possibility is if it's not someone that's like hinted at in some weird way that's not here, I wonder if, now hear me out, Freya killed Freya. And someone might be wondering, like, isn't that your original theory? That she killed herself? Kinda. A little bit modified. Freya is the murderer, but the victim isn't actually Freya, just an imposter of Freya. I don't know. It just something has me curious about it. Hmm. But I guess it doesn't matter at the moment. Let's explore the place first. Dragon. Snake. Worm. That's the one. Um, a worm, at least spelled like that, is a type of dragon. Curiously enough, they call this room a study. What would you call it? The secret death chamber of doom. Cool. Do those look like scratch marks to you on the glass? Yeah, they're on the inside. Hmm, interesting. Is that a it's got a translucent exoskeleton. You can actually see its insides. Also, crabs normally have two claws, right? Not three. Oh. Uh, you sure we should be touching it? Grimoire, don't you think it looks familiar? Oh. really reminds me of something. That little wooden toy we found? Yeah, but I don't think that's going to help us. I think I've seen it more recently. I know exactly what she's talking about. Um, I'll get to it once I finish looking around, though. Some kind of fish and a bird skull, I guess? If that's a bird skull, we're talking about a 15-foot bird here. 
Well, how about we stop talking about it? Actually, that's not too much at all on the possibility. Look at how big ostriches are. Or the tail bird. Tail birds actually had bigger skulls than what most uh, large birds do now. To the point that they actually were just more bulky. If I remember correctly, they were about four to five feet tall. Kind of a shame that they're no longer alive. Centipede? Millipede? How many legs has it got? Too many. Well? Who are all the people in this photo? Not sure, but it looks like someone didn't like them very much. Their eyes have all been crossed out. Interesting. See, that's weird. That looks like Poppy. That looks kind of like Felix. Um, oh sorry, not Felix, uh, Fritz, uh, go to the clues, that one back there looks like Felix, and then these two, one kind of looks like Penny, while the other one kind of looks like Pointer, bizarre. That photo is important, I'm sure of it. I'll get to it in a sec. You know, in any normal room, this thing would be my main concern. In here, though, it barely makes the top three. Fair. That's a bookcase. It's mostly empty. What a surprise. An axe and some kind of hunting rifle, mounted on the wall. Honestly, it doesn't look like they've been moved in a few years. I'm more worried about the third one. The third one? The one that isn't there. Oh. Right, you can see another mount. For something I would assume is pickaxe. Crumpled up paper. Is there anything written on any of it? Not really. It's mostly blank. Interesting. Coffee table, half empty wine bottle, lap left on. I'm gonna say someone's been using this room. Someone complacent enough to leave their notebook lying around. Ooh, several pages have been whipped out, but a few remain. Fifth Ambassador located. Finally, can't say I harbored any optimism, but still somehow disappointed. No better than the rest of them. Took my misted friend to the music room for experiments. It worked, perhaps too well. The laboratory was another disappointment. All that effort for what? He's even more short-sighted than I could have guessed. Went to the bottom. Nice view. It's been mostly cleaned out, but I have what I need. She got in. She was careful. Nothing was moved. But I know it's time. Interesting. An incinerator built into the wall. It's still pretty hot. Is there anything left inside? It's mostly ashes. But yeah, there's something. Oh, that's a feather. Not much more than pile of ash and dash. Among the ashes are several black buttons. Red colored scraps of fabric are still visible. Red. That gives me Felix and Hawkshaw, as they're the only two that wears red, but I don't think it'd be Hawkshaw. Is Felix the main suspect? The fuck? It's a wooden pin board, hung up on one of the chains. Looks like there's a couple of things missing from it. Oh. A large central sheet of paper has been pinned to it. Four lines have been drawn from the gap in the center. A small sheet underneath features a drawing resembling the silhouette of a cloaked figure. Which actually looks like Hawkshaw. Weird. Someone's been using this room. Huh. The study. I don't get it. 
This room is in the original building plans for the mansion, but nowadays it's some big secret? It's not a secret to everybody. At least one other person still- The way the notebook was left out on the table- My bad. Makes me think it's someone who has the room all to themselves. Whoever it was, they left more than just the notebook. There's a whole design project on this pinboard. Feels like someone put quite a bit of effort into it. It's a shame there are things missing from it. Now I'm betting it'd make more sense if we could see it all together. That might not be impossible, you know. Oh. Two items missing. This one. Oh my god, the culprit's actually Freya. No fucking way. What would it be? Um, a piece of paper. Would it be this? That doesn't seem right. We need something that could attach to the pin board. Attach the pin board. What would it be? It wouldn't be this, would it? That's not right. Something that's been taped at the top. Oh, okay. That's a good hint. Taped at the top. Do I even have anything that was taped? Ah, oh, fuck it. Okay, look, one by one. What was taped? No way. from Freya's room and those sketches did Freya design Detective Hawkshaw's clothes what kind of sense does that make I don't think that's why Freya made that painting but it may have been why somebody took a photo of it to use as reference and as for those sketches of Hawkshaw I don't think Freya actually drew them it was somebody else someone with less of a talent for art doesn't exactly narrow it down should we go ask Detective Hawkshaw about all this? I'm not sure. We still don't know what's really going on. Oh my god. Fritz. Might be the murderer? Another photograph. Their faces are all crossed out with some kind of black ink. That's weird. Oh, you think so? Uh, no, I mean, something I just realized. Sally, did we meet any of these people here at Tango Tower? Well, the woman on the left looks a little like Poppy, but her style is way different. And at first I thought the guy on the top right was Felix, but now that I look at it, I don't think it is him. Sorry, I meant Felix. Hold on, what the fuck is going on? Go back to those rooms. Let's not water off right now. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not water off. Okay, so we have access to... Let's not water off. Let's not water off. A few let's rooms. Not water off. It has to be something I'm missing. But I wonder what? It 
it's a wooden pin board hung up looks like there's a couple of things missing from it it's not really what I wanted but that's how we got in it leads down into the great hall doesn't look like there's any other way to get in or out hooks big hooks hmm Fascinating. If I'm being honest, a ladder. Want to go up? That means I missed something, didn't I? Let's not wander off right now. Okay, let's be a little more thorough. Because I'm kind of creeped out about all this. <laughs> So I oh, I'm oh, sorry. I know exactly what I'm missing. It's the evidence that I meant to re-show, um, right here. This is what we need to recreate, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, as that is pr probably the most recent um, version she was talking about. Crab? It's got also crab. Okay. So, okay, for one. Oh, fuck. Yeah, kind of like that. And then this was up. Perfect. Hell yeah. That is not a pickaxe. What's this? Something somebody didn't want us to find. Holy shit. That's a goddamn crossbow. Wait a sec. See this? That crossbow has the same wheel as this. And oh, this is a special type of crossbow. It's not meant to fire arrow bullets. It's supposed to fire something that attaches into something so you can wheel it back in. Oh, no fucking way. someone trying to hide it from us I don't know but it looks incomplete to me I want to know what happened to the rest of it where are the other parts we already found them and it was used to kill Freya we found them already holy shit I think that might attach the crossbow but not this part of the crossbow oh Rip. I think that but not this part. Ah shit. Actually. Is it this? That doesn't we need something that uh can I go back? <laughs> oh shit, is it actually this? Just the murderer? What do you make of it? Not sure. Let's keep an open mind. You don't think the crossbow is a murder weapon? Oh no, the crossbow is definitely the murder weapon. But that doesn't mean we've solved the mystery. The murderer. Oh shit. Time to solve this.
malicious, wait, machine chins, mutter. All right, break out the notebook. Time to put it all together. Let's start with this. It's an arrow for the crossbow, and it matches Freya's wound. It's the murder weapon. I'm sure of it. Despite the fact it doesn't have any blood on it, and it wasn't found anywhere near the crime scene. Mm-hmm. It was cleaned, then it was hidden. I don't think anybody expected us to get down to that room at the bottom of the lake. Okay, so Freya was shot by a crossbow. Where was it fired from? From above. It was fired from above, Freya. Above, huh? Yeah. Our diagram doesn't show everything. Let's add in the rest of the crime scene. The attic. Perfect hiding place. We even found a part of the murder weapon up there. The reel was used to pull the arrow back up through the crack in the floorboards. Explains why we never found a weapon at the crime scene, I guess. The murderer must have dropped the reel in the attic. I'm guessing they were in a hurry to escape. Wait. The arrow was fired through the crack in the floorboards? Yeah. It's directly above where Freya was found lying on her back. Nope. Doesn't add up. It would have missed her if she was still standing up by the painting. Ah, right. Unless... Freya was already lying on her back. Was never hit by the arrow. Diagonally? No. She... Freya was already lying on her back before the arrow was fired. I think so, too. She had already been killed. She was relaxing. She'd already been killed, maybe. She'd already been killed. You think so? Maybe not. Freya was already lying on her back. I think so too. Was she relaxing? She was relaxing. You think so? Maybe not. Freya was already lying. I think so too. Wait, she was unconscious? Fuck, I should have went in the gut. Was my first option, was my second option. Then I questioned it, and I was like, nah, relaxing. She'd fallen unconscious. Something in the room caused Freya to fall unconscious. The gramophone. The gramophone. Right. But the gramophone by itself can't do that. There's something in it, and it's poison. There is something in the gramophone. Mm hmm. Something small. This? That's not it. The fuck was in it? That's not it. What was in the gramophone? A crack tape? That's not it. It wasn't the damaged one, was it? That's not it. Oh, thank God. I thought it was gonna go crazy. The fuck was in it? I have no clue. I'm gonna guess this. Pointer's research says it can emit an incredibly loud hiss when it feels threatened. Poppy and Fitz both said they heard a loud noise around the time of the murder. Neither of them had any idea what it was. This seems a little far-fetched. Is it really loud enough to knock someone out? No. I don't think so, not by itself. But don't forget, it was being amplified by the shape of the gramophone. Now, I don't think we're purely talking about volume either. It might just be a particular type of frequency. This is getting kinda scientific. Since when do you know anything about the effects of weaponized audio frequency? I don't. But I think someone else does. Do you remember that statue we found in the music room? The hornets playing. It's a pretty similar shape to the one on the gramophone. That broken glass isn't there on accident. This is someone's science experiment. Thinking about it, Pointer said he saw Flora was knocked out too. I guess they were both in range of the noise, although Pointer might have been lying. Personally, I think he was telling the truth about that. 
It's pretty clear, a powerful frequency did pass through Flora's tower. Caused quite a bit of damage, too. Actually, in theory, because everything resonates at a certain volume, you... Or I shouldn't say volume, sorry, a certain frequency. So... The thing is, if you can get a loud enough frequency that an object vibrates at, then you can destroy that object due to the vibrations. So in theory, you could do that with humans or animals and plants, fungi, you know, etc, etc, etc. With noises, if you have the proper frequency, depending on what you were specifically trying to target, like DNA, cells, the eye, the lungs, everything resonates at a different frequency. You just have to have it loud enough. Though, I think the problem is, with most creatures, you might just kill them with the volume of the noise before the frequency would kill them. Ironically. Those cracks didn't appear out of nowhere. Freya's paints, the pink cassette tape, and the gramophone itself. They all sustained similar damage while they were in that room. That's some seriously powerful vibration. Enough to crack metal. Enough to knock someone out all the way across a room. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't get. If the frequency was so powerful and had such a big range, how did the murderer pull it off? Wouldn't they have been in range too? Think about it. They can't have been much further away from the gramophone than Flora was. They protect themselves. Also, before I continue, you have to realize that, remember, every object f vibrates at a different frequency. So unless the bug was emitting frequencies, like a wide range of them, or at least certain frequencies to vibrate different objects, and their specific compounds and alloys, not everything would be damaged. We do see that in some objects actually not sustaining any damage, like wood and the painting, but other objects do sustaining damage, like people getting knocked unconscious, the paints, the tape, the gramophone, but they protected themselves. How? We know exactly how, actually. These are some pretty heavy-duty earmuffs. I think they'd be enough to block out the sound. Right. Let's go over everything from the start. One, Freya is painting Flora's portrait. They're listening to music on the gramophone. Two, the murderer is hiding in the attic, wearing earmuffs. Three, the golden beetle starts to emit its hissing noise. Hold on. How did it know? The beetle? Yeah. What triggered it at that particular moment? Pointer's research said it makes the noise when it feels threatened. I'm not sure. Maybe something in the music? Maybe. <clears throat> Four. Freya and Flora are both knocked unconscious by the vibrations. Freya lands on her back. She drops the brush and palette by her side. Five. The murderer fires the crossbow directly downwards. Six. The arrow is pulled back up on the reel. Seven. The murderer leaves the attic, presumably. Eight. The door is kicked down. Fitz and Poppy enter the room. That's it. Mm. There's something bothering me. What? I just want to check something. Let's go back to the crime scene. I bet you it's going to be something to do with the bug and the gramophone. I'm starting to wonder if maybe multiple people were involved. The answer is in the painting. I'm sure of it. Frey was unable to finish. Frey added the blood to the painting herself. Swapped out with blood.
Wait, what? I think I can hear the bug. Maybe? The answer is in the painting. I'm sure of it. But why? What was that? Can we flip the painting around? What? I'm confused. Is it a feather? Huh. I'm not sure what the meaning. No. That's a case file. What is that noise? It's dark. I can see the stars. It's dark. The answer is in the painting. I'm sure of it. Okay, let's read this. Bray was unable to finish the painting as she died at some point during the process. Flora appears to be wearing a knife, wielding a knife. The red substance on the tip was discovered to be blood. Bray added the blood to the painting herself. Her red paint was swapped out with blood. Flora is not holding a knife, holding a red and white ink tip feather. Hmm. But what? I'm kind of confused, honestly. What about the painting? It's dark. Freya, did you leave us a clue? Did she? Huh. Oh. So what's bothering you? Something that's not here. The thing we didn't find. We know she was holding it during the painting. Flora's ink dip feather? It was here. In this room. Where'd it go? We found that somewhere else. We found it somewhere else. It was the stuff that was burnt. We were a little too late to save it. So it was stolen from the crime scene, and ended up in the incinerator down in the study. Someone wanted to destroy it, I guess. But how? How was it stolen from up here in Flora's tower? Presumably, Flora dropped it when she fell unconscious. Yeah, and then what? The murderer couldn't have stolen it if they were up in the attic. So the question is, how could they steal something from a room they weren't able to access? The final clue about the crime scene. 
Freya left it for us right here. Gramophone, unfinished painting, or the egg? It's in the unfinished painting. It's not quite a photo, but still, it's an image of the crime scene recorded just before the murder. Ah, if only she'd finished it, and then I could be totally sure. It's true she never finished it, but she did intend to finish it. Meaning? We know more about the painting than what Freya actually got down on the canvas. Freya prepared all the colors she was going to need before she started painting. Oh. The yellow wasn't used. To paint. going to be used to paint the sketch of something sitting in the window. Something in the window. Oh. There's a flower missing. Hello. The potted fruit. That's not it. No? Um... What was in the window? What would have been in the window? A bird? There she is. Our little thief. How long has it been there? Did it hear the whole conversation? She did. But she's a very good listener. Holy shit, Hawkshaw. Trained a bird. Well now, I think this has quite served its purpose, don't you? What? Why did you... It's Penelope, if you don't mind. But before we begin, isn't there a certain formality demanding our attention? I'm afraid I have to insist. It's to the benefit of us all, I assure you. Hands with. You're kidding, right? Lovely. Now, tell me, what was it that drove you this far? I'm ever so curious. Wait. I just need to know the truth. Is that right? Interesting. Why did you do it, Penny? What did Freya do to you? Absolutely nothing. So, what? You just hated her indiscriminately? Freya Fellow was an inspiration to us all. She was possessed of a great energy. The volition to create something from nothing. The willpower to walk beyond her boundaries. She was truly free. Everything I couldn't be. Huh. You know what? I just realized I actually have no idea who Penelope Pointer really is. Weird, isn't it? Considering we've met her, what is it, three times now? Exactly. How do we know this one isn't a disguise, too? You think you've already hollowed us out, don't you? Only a few short hours at Tangle Tower. You feel like you've got everyone sussed. Unearthed every single one of our secrets. 
Nothing but bullet points for your notebook. Go on, indulge me. What does it say in your notes about Penelope Pointer? <laughs> Suppose I can't argue with that, can I? Penny, we only know what you choose to tell us. So why not help us out? Very well. Penelope Pointer is actually not very important at all. She pales in comparison to those who came before her and to those that came after. Living at Tangle Tower, it is very difficult to attain the levels of self-realization you probably take for granted. Um, you sure this is a Tangle Tower thing and not a you thing? Perhaps you didn't notice. Not one of them is happy. Not one. So why stay? Why not just leave? I thought she did leave. Penny, you said you traveled, didn't you? I did. Many times I've walked away. It did not help me. You saw the family tree hanging in the Grand Hall, did you not? Yeah, it lists a bunch of people who don't live here anymore. A bunch of people who don't live here anymore. I couldn't have put it better myself. My mother, for one. My father, too. The other two Remingtons. Poppy's mother, Primrose. And her brother, Richard. And Fitz's father. That's five. Five people that might have lived here, but don't. And that was the first question I wanted answered. You wanted to know where they'd all gone? More than that. I wanted to know if I belonged with them. I have no place here. Not among the fellows, the Remingtons, or the Pointers. But I felt there must be a reason why everyone else left. Some common purpose they all share. Perhaps it could be my purpose, too. So, what did you actually do about it? Nothing I could do, at first. Nobody would tell me anything. The more questions I asked, the fewer answers I got. Then, I found it. I was 19. Same age Freya is now. Found what? The study. The one hidden in the middle of the house. It's right next to a bedroom. I'd hear voices at deep one. And the strangest thing, the wall behind my bed would get incredibly hot. For hours on end, the paint would peel. Wallpaper wouldn't stay up. I thought I was cursed. I thought it was something trying to break through. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I found my way in the same way you did. Once you know it's there, it's simple. So, you got into the study and found the incinerator. That must have been a relief, right? It was still warm when I found it. Then, I looked inside. Let's see how thorough you've been. Tell me, do you know what a misted is? Misted? Sure, yeah. Misteds? Sure, yeah. Hmm. More observant than I thought. Sorry. What are we talking about? It's a collective term, from before my time. Birds, insects, amphibians, anything living off the lake water. The mutation can take several generations, or it can happen overnight. Wait, mistids. Like cryptids. Uh, like Bigfoot or whatever. A little egregious, isn't it? I suspect that was an intentional parallel. The main difference being mistids are perfectly real. They're just kept secret. Or at least, that was the original plan. As it happened, some got out. Quite a few got out. How do you know all this? When I entered the study at 19, I found a single object that rather changed my life. Something which answered my questions while at once creating all new ones. That means Boggy. From the previous game as I missed it. That originated from here. But got out. Fascinating. Answered her questions. I'm assuming this? The 
five missing family members standing together as a single unit, calling themselves the Ambassadors of Misted Mansion. So, the house was renamed from Misted Mansion to Tango Tower? And rightly so. The age of Misted Mansion is long past. When I looked inside the incinerator on my first visit to the study, I found nothing but ash. The afterimage of a bygone era denied to me in its entirety. The study, the room at the bottom of the lake, the lake itself, all empty shells. I felt my only hope lay with the ambassadors. If I could find them, maybe, maybe they'd share the family history that Flora and the others were trying so hard to forget. How did you track them down? It was tough. They'd taken almost everything. Books, maps, charts, the creatures themselves, all lost, taken away or destroyed. But I got lucky. I got a lead. I found one, and he led me to the rest. And? What happened? Why'd you paint out all their faces? They didn't help you either, did they? Nineteen-year-old me had imagined they'd all left with a mission. A unified purpose. But they hadn't. They were, in fact, every bit as fractured as the people that still live here. Most of them had left tracking escaped mystics. Some claimed to be researchers, others little more than hunters. All five, completely useless to me. Even your own parents? Eventually, I returned to Tangle Tower. I had nowhere else to go. I considered giving up. But instead, I made a decision. I'm not gonna lie. You know when, um... The last game? There was that photo of hunters? Something's been bugging me. One of the... Um, original five... Do kind of look like someone in the photo, but I don't know if I'm misremembering that or if that's a legit thing I don't know there was only one person at Tangle Tower still of interest to me my dear uncle pointer had suddenly made a show of taking up astronomy a fairly superficial charade I don't think many people were fooled by it but I knew it wasn't just a falsehood it was a mask pointer had found something something from the era of this dimension. He found this. So where did he get the beetle? I cannot be sure. But I theorize that he received it in the post. In the post? From who? Who can say? Someone outside Tangle Tower. But the thought that he would be in contact with such a person all that time decided to take what was owed to me. So you stole it. Stealing the beetle turned out to be only the first step. Upon realizing it was gone, Pointer made little effort to disguise his frustration. I asked what was bothering him. He foresaw no risk in sharing a little of the truth with his knees. He told me he'd lost a rare treasure, something he'd been keeping safe. I suggested, innocently, that perhaps it was not lost. Perhaps it had been stolen. He was very ready to believe he'd been the victim of theft. When I offered to call in a private detective, he jumped on the idea. She arrived the next day. Hawkshaw prides herself on her punctuality, as you know. Why, though? Why go through all that? The name, the costume, and everything? It's somewhat sad to admit, but I had a little use left for Penny Pointer as she was. Hawkshaw afforded me new advantages. Opportunities. But didn't you have to pretend to be working for Professor Pointer? Ah, uh, well, that was one of the advantages. Pointer was in such a desperate state, he was finally willing to share some of his secrets. On the second day, Hawkshaw explained she needed to be able to search the secret laboratory. Pointer gave in, and gave me the code for the harp statue. Reluctantly, but still. So, you stole Pointer's research? I would have done if I'd found anything worth stealing. But he had made remarkably little progress, barely scratching the surface of the beetle's true mystery. Which is? 
<laughs> she carries an exoskeleton approximately 90% identical to go. But it's not the 90% I'm interested in. Did you ever question what exactly makes the water here so unique? Before Misted Mansion was built over the lake. Before the lake was even a lake. Lord Remington and his wife built a small structure here. A research station, supposedly. Fast forward two or three generations, and as you saw for yourself, it's been mostly cleared out. The ambassadors took everything when they left. And everything they didn't take was burned in the incinerator. However, possessing additional insight, I found something the others had missed. It's not much, but I have what I need. So, why isn't this the end of the story? Why did you stay? Why did you kill Freya? What the actual fuck? Simply put, Freya was too good for me. It's my fault. I pushed her over the edge. Unknowingly, but still, I take the blame. What are you talking about? Did you know I based the design for Hawkshaw on something Freya painted? Yeah. This, actually. If you actually look closely, it shares similar designs to this, but I never thought of applying this to this. Look at it. The red cape, the black hair. That's right. I had assumed it was purely abstract. I just thought it had a good energy. I later discovered it was a figure of some kind, something from Freya's recurring nightmare. For all her vitality, I think Freya was probably the most troubled of all of us. She was desperate to leave Tangle Tower, but she couldn't just walk away. For quite some time, she'd been trying to break into Pointer's laboratory. Freya and her friends were halfway through deciphering those symbols on the harp statue, I believe. Why did she care about getting into Pointer's lab? That's exactly what I wondered. At first, I thought perhaps she just wanted to free the beetles. She has a fondness for them. What Pointer was doing upset her significantly. But in fact, I think it was something else. I think she wanted to free Fiona. The real reason Freya was unable to leave Tangle Tower is that she could not get Fiona to agree to come with her. We're now firmly in the realm of speculation, but I think Freya felt that exposing the darker secrets of Tangle Tower not just to the rest of the family, but to the world, would compromise all three families. And perhaps, somehow, free Fiona from the shackles of her inheritance. That was her plan anyway, but something happened before Freya could find her way into Pointer's laboratory. She found her way into your study, found your notes, found that photograph, I'm willing to bet she put it all together quicker than we did. So she worked out what had happened to the five ambassadors. Specifically, what you'd done to them when they refused to help you. Freya had made a promise to paint Flora as a birthday gift, a parting gift no less. She'd be in a locked room, several hours away from her friends. It was my best chance. But why hide in the attic? And why bother with the beetle at all? The beetle in the gramophone wasn't for Freya. It was for Flora. She didn't deserve to be involved. She suffered enough. I couldn't get Flora out of her room. But if she could be unconscious, then she wouldn't have to witness anything. Why the knife? The illusion of the painted knife with the blood. That for Fiona and Poppy too, I suppose. Give them something to focus on. You mean it distracted them while you made your escape? It helped them cope. 
The very idea of something abstract, something supernatural. I believe it made things marginally less painful for them, initially. Worked on you, too. So why are you still here? Why not take your first chance and leave? Ah, well, I've been waiting for an opportunity to get my beetle back. I'd really rather not leave without it. Wait, it's still here? It's still inside the gramophone. Yeah, because we're hearing the noise from it. That, and you remember how... The crab toy was left with a note? That wasn't for us. That was for Poppy and... Yeah. These two. What's going on? Poppy, they are both awake. I can see. You two all right? My head hurts. What happened to us? You were both unconscious. Fourteen minutes by my count. Really? You're both fine. No injuries. Was it the beetle? In the gramophone? I heard it through the ceiling in my room. The exact same sound we heard before the murder. I guess it must have been. So how did we get down here? What happened to Penny? Fit saved both of you, obviously. When I reached Flora's tower, you were both unconscious, and Penny was crouched down beside you. She had her crossbow on her, but who knows? She may have just been checking you were both asleep. Did you know she, uh, that she was the murderer? Poppy and Fifi suspected her. Apparently, they were pretty close to solving it themselves. Fitz did not want to believe us, because he liked Penny. A lot. But what happened? Fitz, what did she do when she saw you? She jumped out the window. What? Did she survive? She did. I heard something land in the garden outside my room. But by the time I got out there to check, she was already gone. Hang on. Poppy, why do you have Penny's hat bird? She left him behind. I found him sitting on the floor in the aviary, all by himself. Poor little thing. The mean lady didn't care about you at all, did she? No, she didn't. I apologize. Poppy seems to be under the illusion that the bird can understand human language. So, Penny got away. I'm afraid she did. We had suspected she might try to escape. I was stationed here by the lake's edge. I proved to be an ineffective guard. She took the boat. Did she take the beetle with her? Nope. How do you know? Because it's right here. It was still in the gramophone. I guess I scared her off before she had a chance to take it. Poppy, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to give it back to your father? No, I'm not. It doesn't belong to anyone. So, I'm going to put it on the ground. And never bother it again. I think that's what she would have wanted. Also, when they were talking, or Fifi made that comment about Poppy talking to the boat, it's kind of amusing that Fitz smiled. But I'm not gonna lie, I did not see any of that coming. I kind of suspected Freya the whole time. I honestly never thought that someone else might have done it until maybe like near the end. But even who I would have suspected was not it. I did say that there might be multiple people and Technically, that's both right and wrong, as Hawkshaw and Penny are the same people. But holy shit. I have to look over these two. It's 
nothing with that. Oh, cool. Let's look. Oop. And then Penny. I don't know. Oh, second listing of clues. Alongside the first. Oh my god, there's so much stuff here. It's so... There's just so much stuff to go over. I cannot do it justice enough to go over it myself. Um, I am curious about two rooms, though. I will show them. One being the lowest level, and the other one, which I'm not seeing, uh, is the study. But anyways, we'll do this one first. God, it's so beautiful. Oh, that's actually close to what they had. Disuse except for a single candle, which is inexplicably lit. Oh, I never even thought about that. A minimum move with a huge window that opens in your lake floor. Um, Wuma had to feel old as if it was the first part of Tangle Tower that was built a very long time ago. There's going to be a huge puzzle game here involving multiple lovers of the mansion, but it never happened. Honestly, I think that might have been for the best. I think it's better that the puzzles were ultimately dropped in this location. There is a laboratory, to be fair. But I feel Oh now that is gorgeous. That's basically what we ended up with. Oh even that is gorgeous. Oh I like the okay, don't get me wrong. I really like the spooky um more spooky essence. And it's probably better with the theme of the laboratory and bottom floor but god is that beautiful and that gorgeous oh that would have been amazing oh. I don't see the study though on it's not the workshop weird Oh, the study right here. I'm just blind. At first, this room was set higher in Tangled Tower, and I imagined this sophisticated, ornate looking attic space. Taxonomy placed a huge role of decorating it after all the people who use this room are avid collectors. We wanted the chamber to feel darker and more hidden. When we made a decision to add an aquarium to the center of the mansion, it added a whole new feel to the room. A windowless room with only real sources of light uh, coming from the tube of water really added a creepy atmosphere. I will agree. Oh. Oh, and you can see it was originally a bow, not a crossbow. Thematically, we needed a study to be a mix of elements and an ornate gentleman's study, a research lab, and private taxidermy collection. The chains and iron cages tip it over the edge to make into feeling fully sinister. Though, to be honest, the hooks could have been hanging stuff, like taxidermy. But it's weird, as I don't know why. Huh. Interesting. As far as clues go, I don't think I want to get much into them. I think I would rather leave most of it to be discovered and read by others. Except for, I guess, one. Which is the building plan. 
chance to explore the building's history, for instance, Fire's room was converted from a storage room, and the rooftop garden actually used to be at the top of the house. For clarity, the building diagram matches the Doll's House style view of the in-game map screen. But it makes you wonder, are there other rooms? A kitchen maybe? A bathroom? Maybe. Maybe. Because remember, this is the north side cross section. That doesn't mean there wasn't more. Probably from the east, west, and south. But still intriguing. This is the clue I was most interested in. As I actually thought there'd be more to it. Um, and it turns out there's not. I thought they were going to say something about um, the towers actually being added. But it does say it here, I guess. Um, oh, I'm not going to lie, that is actually a very interesting design. Though I don't think it would have worked. Not very well, at least. The fish design is interesting. Uh, I'm still so disappointed this never made it in. And they agree, it's kind of a shame. And there you go. Well, I don't really have anything else to go over. To well, I could, but I'm not. Um, God, this game really blindsided me out of nowhere. I would never have imagined the murderer being who they were and what's more they got away they didn't get everything they wanted but holy shit it was something and something I'm really happy I got to experience you know it's a really good game I would say one of the best parts is actually exploring everything. Uh, to me, at least, it is actually really fun. But I will say, it is time consuming, you know? But I'm not gonna lie, it was still enjoyable. And I really, really hope I get to play the next game whenever it comes out, if another game ever comes out. Fuck. I love this series so, so much. And I would recommend everyone to not only support the devs, but to play the series. It's really good. And it actually really makes you think. But, yeah. I guess... I guess there's not else or much else for me to say, you know? So, I guess I can leave it there. So, thank you for tuning into the frequency. This is the Rebel Lemon signing off. So, good night and sweet nightmares.